Hello and welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. In the second half of the book, because our projects are getting bigger, because we really need to make larger pieces of software in order to properly demonstrate the benefits of object orientation, we're going to switch the environment that we do our development in. So up to this point we've been using command line tools, I've been using VI in the videos, and I've been doing command line uh, running of programs. But as the programs start to get larger, we're going to do a number of different things. We're going to start splitting our programs across multiple different files. And, um, <clears throat> and it will just become easier to use a different set of tools. In addition, because you have a better understanding of what you're doing, these other tools will make more sense. Uh, the reason that we didn't start you off in, uh, in these other tools is because they are a bit more complex. And so the tool that we're going to use, that I'm going to continue using in, in these videos, is Eclipse. And you can go and you can download Eclipse from uh, Eclipse.org. So if we go to... If you go to Eclipse.org, at least at the time that I'm making this video, uh, the most recent version of Eclipse is called Juno. Uh, there are there's a new version that comes out about every year, so odds are very good that if you're watching this <clears throat> any length of time from now, this will not be the current, uh, the current newest release. It's recommended that you use the Eclipse Classic, and when you download this, you will, uh, because I am running Linux, I get options for both 32-bit and 64-bit, so I downloaded the 64-bit Linux uh, this is something that I have put under the virtual machine, um, if you have the virtual machine working. Otherwise, you can just download it yourself and follow their instructions for installing it. So once you have Eclipse, we can run Eclipse. I haven't added it to my path or anything. I just have it sitting here in my user directory. And it's, so it's inside of a directory called Eclipse, and the executable is called Eclipse. And as you can see here, I'm running the version called Juno. You'll be asked for a workspace. I have multiple workspaces. I created one just for this video set so that it's not cluttered with other things. And if I select OK there, Eclipse will start up. Some things to note about Eclipse. Eclipse is fairly resource intensive. So for example, if you're on a netbook or some other low powered device, Eclipse is probably not going to be that happy, especially once you add the Scala plugin to it. So you come up with a, a screen that looks like this. You should feel free to go through whatever, you know, your overview, tutorials, whatever. I'm just going to jump straight to the workbench. Okay. So this is the main view that we're going to see as we work in Eclipse. Uh, when you put code together inside of Eclipse, whereas previously, we just started editing a file. And as we saw in the last chapter, the file that uh, when we started making actual applications, we might have one file that has the object with main in it, and then we'd have other files that would have the different classes that we would use. When we're editing things in Eclipse, we're going to have all of those files, but they need to be organized into different projects. And so we're going to have separate projects for, every, for the things that we work on. I won't create too many projects over time you wind up creating them. I'll probably, so for example, you might create one project for the exercises that you do while you're reading through the book. You might create another project for whatever si assignments you do and another project is for small exercises. You can put multiple uh, applications inside of one uh, project so that you don't form too many projects. Uh, but you don't want to load absolutely all of your code into a single project. Now, there are multiple ways of making things in here. And of course, so as I said earlier, part of the reason for not introducing you to this early on is because it is a bit more complex. You can see from these menus, there are lots and lots of options here in Eclipse. Now, in order to be able to run Scala in Eclipse, the next thing that we need to do is install the Eclipse plugin. And to install plugins, you come under Help, and there is an Install New Software. And that brings up a window 
that looks like this. Now I have already installed uh, Scala under this. Um, but we'll run through the steps so that you can see how to do this for yourself. So at scalaide.org, this is where they have the Eclipse plugin. Uh, and you can see here that they, they run through this. And if we go to downloads, normally you'd want to download the stable. Now, as of the time that I'm making this video, it turns out that the stable version does not support uh, Juno. It supports Helios and Indigo. Uh, and Indigo was the release before Juno. So this is a bit of a problem. I don't have the ability to support uh, Juno with the stable release. So at least for my purposes, I'm going to the nightly builds for the simple reason that the nightly builds have a release that supports Juno. Um, and in order to use this, I would click here. It tells me that it's copied that URL to the clipboard. You could also you know, try highlighting it. Um, and what I would do is over here, so that I'm going to add a new site. And paste this in. Select OK. And I will select all there. And go to next. It went and it checked to make sure that everything is happy. I can click next again. I will accept the terms and finish. And this will run through and will install the Scala plugin uh, for me. Hopefully by the time that you are watching this video, uh, the Juno will be supported in the uh, stable build. And honestly, you should be using the stable build if at all possible. One of the things that happens is typically it takes a while for a lot of the plugins to, to catch up every time that Eclipse does a new release. And Eclipse does a new release typically at the end of each summer. Uh, so I happen to be making this shortly after the, the end of the summer. So Eclipse has been updated, but they're still working on the Scala support uh, for it. Yes, I know this is not, <clears throat> if it's not coming directly from eclipse.org or whatnot, they will give you a little warning. And after it is installed, they say that you should restart. So I will say yes, I wish to restart. And then Juno will pop back up. Select that same workspace. Once we get into Eclipse uh, and we have the, the Scala plugin installed, what I need to do is to create, so yes, I will say go to the recommended default settings. I need to make it so that I'm working in Scala. You'll notice over here it says Java. So by default, when you bring this up, you're working in the, the Java environment. I don't want to be developing in Java, I want to be developing in Scala. There are a number of ways that you can get to other uh, to get to the Scala view, I'm going to go with the open perspective over here and you'll see that there is a Scala perspective. And so I click OK. Now I have both Scala and Java and I need to write, create a project to, uh, to play around with. So I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to make a new Scala project. And I have to give my Scala project a name. So I'm going to go with the name book code. Uh, that will be sufficient for our purposes. And there are uh, down here buttons for next and cancel and finish. There are multiple different options. All the defaults are going to be fine for us. So I'm just going to say finish. And you can see that when that happens, I get under the package explorer, a little project. It lists libraries. You could go looking through these, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, and then a source directory. And so all the code that we're going to write goes inside of our source. So what I want to do just to start off with is I want to write a little uh, hello world 
but inside of Eclipse. So I'm going to go inside of Source and I am going to create a new Scala object. Now you notice down here there's something called a, there's a Scala application. This will also do a Scala object, but it will use some things that we haven't talked about yet to make it so that it runs an application. I want to do things the way that we're used to, so I'm going to create a Scala object. Uh, of course, the uh, standard first is our Hello World. You might also note there was a warning up there saying use of the default package is discouraged. We'll talk more about that later, exactly what it means to be in the default package and how we can put things in other packages. I will type in my definition for main. And say that it can print line hello world. If I save that, now I need to run it. And so how do we run things? Well, there is a run menu up here uh, that has a run with keystrokes. There's a run as, there are run configurations. I can do the run and say whether I want it to be a Scala or a Java. I'm going to cancel that. A lot of times I wind up doing the right click on here. I guess I'll have to do this higher if I want you to see it. Right click and down towards the bottom there is a run as Scala and or run as and I can pick Scala from that. One of the things about Eclipse, once again, we don't introduce you to it early because it is more complex. There are lots of ways of doing things in Eclipse. When I run that, you'll see that a console pops up here and it shows you Hello World. So that was our simple first program. You've seen how to uh, get Eclipse, how to install the Scala plugin under Eclipse, and how to write your first app. So what you can do at this point is actually go back and take some of the things that you've done before and recreate them inside of, of Scala and Eclipse and familiarize yourself with the environment so that you can run things and whatnot. Uh, that's it for this video, and we'll see you again soon.